14 squared. 14 squared. Okay. Anybody have anything else that's different from that? Jason? I got 10.5 squared. 10.5 squared. Yes? 28 squared. Same. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. 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 Here is, do we, have any, do we have any different answers? I have 14 squared. 14 yeah. squared, that's right there. 14 squared. Sarah. Right. Now, we had a, a little disagreement, you and I, last time, about the, the validity of spending our time on things like this. Okay? I would say this is at least some proof that I am correct because it's not possible that all these areas are correct. None of them are correct. Uh, you misunderstand things like what the square has to do with area. You misunderstand, uh, well, you're relying on a formula that you don't remember. Okay? That's why I'm trying to help you understand something. Let me help you to grasp concepts rather than memorize formulas. Okay, because the memory has the formula, it's not working. All right, one answer up here kind of is right. All right, kind of. Sort of applied the formula correctly, but then misunderstood what the square means. Okay, like what square has to do with area. What number? We'll talk about it. Okay. Let's first talk about the square. Okay. It seems like every one of you got a number and then you squared it. Anybody not square the number they came up with? One person, three people, four people? You said squared. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. All these numbers are squared. At least that's what you said to me. That's what it sounded like you said. Like when you say 14 squared, that's what it sounds like you're saying. If I misunderstood, you can correct me. Okay. Uh, there's a common misconception. You get some number from a formula and then you put a square on it. Okay. This is a... This is like an operation that's not done yet. What is 14 squared? 28. That's 14 times 2. 14 times 14. Yeah. It needs to be like, well, okay, so instead of like just putting squared, because uh -huh. that would make it an exponent, you need to put like centimeters or inches. Okay, so that goes back to what we talked about the first day, I think. It's 196. It's not specified, so it could be basically anything. It could be any units, but that's the point. We're misunderstanding what's square. Okay? So let's go back to what we said area was. What did we say area was? The space inside of the object. A little space more specific. The space inside of the object. The space inside the amount of something that you can put inside of a, a an shape amount or object case up. Okay, these are all good. They're not quite, you know, 100% of what we said. Brandon? Length, time, length times width. Length times width, that's a that's a way to calculate area for certain shapes, right? But it doesn't get at what area exactly is. Area is the amount of space inside of a closed object. Okay, we're getting more towards like what area is, but we can get a little more specific than that. How like how we measure how much space something takes up. Anybody? Yeah? How many squares fit in there? That's, that's what I was looking for. That's the definition that helps us out. Okay? No. How many squares? Let's just say that, just kind of abbreviate. How many squares fit? How many squares fit? Yes? I don't get it because squares can be like all different sizes, so people would get different answers. Yeah. Yeah. Shouldn't get different answers if what I'm saying by seven here is this is not going to be the scale. If I tried to put squares down on this, it wouldn't work out very well. But what I'm saying by seven is essentially seven squares can fit along the bottom. Okay. Well, and like if someone if they don't 
don't know that it's seven, they could do different sizes and they can get like say 14 squares on the bottom. Like if they use small squares. Yeah. But I'm telling you how many squares. Yeah, but what if you didn't know that? Well, just like you, you weren't paying. I'm not that. asking you to do a problem like that. I'm asking you to do this problem. Oh, right. It's seven and four. Okay, seven and four. It's seven along here, four right there. Yeah. Just to clarify something, is yeah. that is that um, area definition that we have? Is that like the actual definition of area? Uh, no. Yeah. I mean, take that to any mathematician or carpenter or anybody else in the world, they'll agree that's what area is. And you could transfer out a different shape besides squares and make it difficult, but you Yeah. Could. You could. It's just that when when you if you say, oh let's use hexagons, when you take hexagons over to a, a, a carpenter or somebody, they're gonna be like, why are you using hexagons? We use squares, right? It's a totally valid way to measure area. It's just that all worldwide we all agree squares is like I appreciate you bringing that up. Yeah, we could trade it out for a different shape, but squares is just the easiest one. Because the squares on the floor? Squares on the floor, the units that we use. When I, when I call China and I tell them how much carpet I want in my house, and they are the only country that has the carpet that I want for some reason, I say square, feet square, yard square, whatever, square. Not triangle, hexagon, right? Because nobody uses that. Does that make sense? Squares and lights, they have tiny, tiny squares. Yeah, there are tiny, tiny squares on the tiny board. So, so let's, let's always come back to this definition here. How many squares can fit? Okay. Yes? 14. 14. Yeah. Yeah. Decided on inches. So let, let, it seems like that's confusing people. Let's just call it inches. It doesn't really matter what we call it. Okay? Right. So what I'm saying by seven along here and four here is that if I were to lay, if I had drawn this perfectly to scale, I could fit seven scale, seven squares this way and four of the, the exact same size squares this way. Okay? So what I'm saying is a seven can go this way. I'm not even going to try it and, and draw that in there because it's not going to look. Right, it might be more confusing. But seven can fit along here, and four can stack this high, right, along this height. All right, so we've got all sorts of different answers, and let's start to go down this road. JC was taking us on and talk about what exactly is it that is a square. It's not the number that you find from the formula that you square, right? I mean, think about it. The smallest one is 10.5, okay? What's 10.5 squared? A really big square. 10.5 squared means 10.5 like times, times itself. And it is, I mean, if we were to look at a square that was 10.5 on one side and 10.5 on the other, the inside of it would be whatever 10.5 times 10.5 is, right? That's a nice little rectangle, right? 10.5 squared. On the answer. That would be the answer. What doesn't make sense? Let's back up. Let's back up. Let's talk about an easier shape. All right. All right. Ten by seven. What I hear? I heard seventy squared. No. Oh, we're missing the half the dungeon. What's that? Never mind, because it's not. You can't be squared if there's no like units. Unit. Unit. Inches. Because you can't square something. Okay, so there's a difference between the inches squared and squaring the number. Yes. Yeah. Yes, okay. So that's where the confusion is coming from. The square doesn't have anything to do with the number that you found. It has to do with the units that we're using. Yes? If you just did a number and then you put, like, square, wouldn't, like, it mean, like, you have to do, like, I, don't, I forgot what it's called, an x. No, like, seven. Yeah. 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 If I put two in, that is called an exponent of two. But it feels like you have more to say about it. Well, what does this exponent mean? If I have 70 and an exponent of two, what does that mean? Well, you would have to do 70 times 70. 70 times 70. Is that how many squares fit? No. It's inside here? How many squares fit? 70. 70. We're done. That's the area, right? Yes. To say 70 is the area is correct. 70, 70 what? 
subject, you would have to add a unit and then you could see what those. Well, and then they wouldn't make it. 70 something something. 70 what? Squares. Inches. 70. Well, Yards. Let's just stop. Carter? Squares. Squares. Just squares. Until I tell you how big those squares are, you can't tell me how big the squares are. It's, you know, but you can tell me they're squares. 70 squares. And that is completely sufficient until I give you some other units. 70 so squares. How would you label that? Like 70 like squares? Sure. 70, squares? write the word squares. 70 squares. Square. 70 squares. Right, just right? The little two. Okay, let's talk about that little two. What? Here's where the little two comes from. When I give you units, okay? So when I tell you that this is seven inches, okay, then I'm saying, if you measure it, all right, you measure it with a ruler, it's seven inches long, right? The distance is seven inches, okay? Wait, is it actually seven inches? Not up here, no. Are you sure? It looks pretty close. I don't think it's very close. It's more like nine and three quarters. Okay, so yeah, it was close. It was only two okay, and a half inches long. And 100 inches, uh, and we'll measure this in inches as well. Why would we measure that in inches and that in centimeters? That'd be very confusing, silly. Seven inches, 10 inches, okay? This is where the square comes from. Uh, I'll try and draw this. One, two, three, four, five, that's five. There's 10, let's see if I can make this look like seven fit here. That's what we're kind of saying. When we say 10 and 7, oh, Avery, I have the station, I'll put your shirt aside so you don't have to worry about it. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, 10 squares fit here, 7 squares fit here. The reason why 10 times 7 being 70 is the area of this rectangle is because that's a calculation that tells us how many squares can fit. 10 can fit along here, 7 high, right? So, one way I can look at it, there's room enough for 7 rows of what? Square ten squares. Seven rows of ten squares. Or there's room enough for ten stacks, columns, so columns seven rows. of seven squares. Well, if you just flipped it, it would still be rows. So. If we flipped it, it would be rows. Yeah. Uh, so that's why ten times seven is the area because ten times seven, in this convenient shape, easily calculates the number of squares that fit. All right. So let's talk about what's that little two about. Right? It's not 70 squared. All right? What? Not 70 squared. That's how many lines? That's a lie. <laughs> what? How many? Not too many squares. So it's but 70 squared, squared is not saying 70 squares. Okay? They're saying two different things. All right, so let's talk about that square. Let's talk about this one square right here. How long is this square on this side? One. Oh, yeah. One what? Inch. Inch. Squared inch. One inch. And what is this side measured? One inch. One inch. What's the area of this one square? One, one, inch. one inch. square. Inch. square right? Inch. One square. What kind of square? An inch square. An inch square. A square that is an inch on either side. That's what an inch square is. It's like it's the, the unit itself is almost just describing what the shape is. It's an inch square. It's a square that's an inch on all sides, an inch square, okay? So when we write this, that's the little two right there. It does mean inch multiplied by inch, okay? It does mean that, but the meaning of that in, in a real life context is a square that is an inch on all sides, okay? So let, can we say that we've cleared up the confusion about at least this two here? 14 squared, 10.5 squared, 28 squared. Yes, yeah. Okay, so it should really be, that square should be like inches squared, inches yeah. squared, inches squared, inches squared. Okay, now that we fixed that, how many of these answers could possibly be right? Zero. One. 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 Zero. At most, one. And possibly zero. At most, one. Now, the, our current way of thinking, our, I mean your, okay, not mine. Your current way of thinking, at least for the majority, it seems, is uh, well, we remember the formula correctly, and that gives us the right number, right? 
Now, I want to clear up a, a misunderstanding it seems like we had. I'm not trying to tell you that every time you find area of something, you need to do this. Yes, you are going to use formulas. Of course you are. I use them. I wouldn't expect you to do anything differently. When I go to find the area of a triangle, I use the formula. Okay? But sometimes, I forget the formula. But I can easily recreate it because I have done this. All right? So, according to this, if this is 4 and this is 7, let's run through this real quick and see if we can figure out, is it 14 inches squared, if those are both inches? Is it 10.5 inches squared? Is it 28 inches squared? Or is it 22 inches squared? Those are all the answers from the other page. Which one of those is it? 14 inches squared. Convince me. Okay. Without just saying one half base times height. Okay. Um, Convince me. Okay. Well, 4 times 7 yes. is the base times height. Yeah. And that's 28 inches. Just beca because it's a triangle, it's divided by 2 because there's two of them in that parallelogram then. And it's 14 inches squared. Okay, so here's a parallelogram, and we've established the parallelogram is made of two of the triangles. We're trying to find the area of. Okay. Whoa. But then why are you multiplying 7 times 4? Because that's the base and height. Because that's, that's how tall it is and how wide it is. Because that's just how we... Wait, are we... Is that that's just having the triangle or the whole thing? That's literally what we're just... Just want the area of this one triangle. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, like, so you would do 4 times 7, which is 28, and then times it by half. Okay. And half of 28 is 14. But I'm not convinced that that is going to, like, it's true that 7 times 4 times 1 half is 14. But how can I be absolutely sure that 14 is the area of this triangle? Oh, no. I'm making this way harder than you can see this. Just draw squares and then Look at all the answers we got. Okay. Only one of them is correct. Lots of different answers. One of these is correct, okay? And if it's not triangles, it's parallelograms. If it's not triangles, or if it's not parallelograms, it's trapezoids. If it's not trapezoids, it's circles. If it's not circles, it's quadratic equations. If it's not quadratic equations, it's quadratic formula. If it's not that, it's something else where your memory fails. At some point, your memory will fail you. So I will, yes, absolutely. All the time, every day. It's true. Your brain, that's kind of a brain. Uh, the part that memorizes things in, in this particular like, memory in the way that like uh, I remember a license plate. Okay? I just look at the license plate and I say it over and over. And the, the license plate is 4C X25394, whatever. Okay? So if I just try to remember it. It goes in this little part of my brain. Okay, I'm not an expert on all of this, so I don't know that it's right there, that it's that big. But it is a fairly small part of your brain that can just look at something and re just by repeating it over and over and over and over, remember it. Okay, it's called a, is it your temporal lobe? Yeah. It's your memorial. <laughs> that makes sense. Temporal. Yes. Temporary. So, <laughs> so that part is meant to be temporary. It, it's function is a temporary function because it quickly gets rid of stuff that it thinks you don't need and replaces it with things that you do. Okay? Now, your neighbor, if you don't know them very well, maybe you remember their name, maybe you forget it, but if they're your friend, now there's a whole story that goes along with that person and their, their name means something. Your name means something. Okay? That's what I'm trying to get you to do. I'm trying to get you to move stuff out of this part of your brain because it's overworked and move it into the part of the brain that, like, has meaning attached to all of these things. Casey? Miss Pennant was telling us yesterday that she read something that um, said that memorization is the <coughs> best way for learning. The yeah. best? Yeah, the best yeah. way. That's how most people learn, and that's the best way that they learn. That's how it works. I'll go talk to Miss Pennant and see where she came up with that. Yeah. All the research I read is the opposite. Well, maybe, maybe you got it from by accident. Or maybe it's really got it from the bad Yes. I was going to say something, but I forgot. 
You didn't. Go ahead. Um, remember we made that into a rectangle, so... If oh, he's going back here. I like that. Yeah, okay. base do 7 times 4 is 28, and then you just divide it by 2, because the triangle's half the rectangle. So you're, you're convincing me now. We took a copy of the triangle, put it on top, took this piece, put it over there, that's what the arrow means, right? We made a what? Uh, we made a rectangle. Rectangle, okay? So it's like this, 28 perfect squares. In the rectangle, we fit 28 perfect squares. But you have to divide it by two because this rectangle is made of triangles. two triangles. Triangles. Two triangles. Yes. Okay. So now that I understand that, I can see it in front of my eyes. Two triangles, twice the area that I need. But when I stack them just right and I move this piece over here, I can see it makes a rectangle of seven by four, which is 28. But I only need half of that. I can clearly see that the triangle is half of that rectangle. That's why I divide it in two. Okay. Why I divide it into? Or at least that's a, a good argument of why that one half makes sense. Okay. So now, which of these answers is correct? Fourteen, 14 inches squared. Yes. yes. Right. Me? Did you say twenty-eight? No. I said fourteen. Why did you say twenty-eight? Okay, let's look at the other shape. What? Were you Oh, yeah, that parallelogram. Parallelogram. Mm -hmm. See here, this one, Lane. 48. 48. I don't know if it's inches or anything. That's good. You don't. Let's say it's uh, centimeters. Centimeters squared. Okay, centimeters squared. Square centimeters. Centimeters squared. So what, you cut that in half? Yep. It was 96. Yeah. And then you divide it by half, and it's 48. Because it's a rectangle. Dividing by half and multiplying by half are different things. So I'll get you hung up on that. What's yeah. that? Dividing me? Yeah, Sarah. Because, well, wait, were you going to ask why it's different? Yeah. Because it's a rectangle. Like, I'm just asking for numbers. Like, did anybody get anything other than uh, I got that. Yeah. I got that. I got, that. I got 96 because I didn't divide it by half. Yeah. Because it's same. just a rectangle yeah. that's slanted. That's what I got, too. Yeah, but you slanted. It's it just a funny looking rectangle. What about me, like, no, which is a funny looking rectangle? I hear Carter talking. I can't hear what he's saying, but I know that he's talking. You could have yeah. that piece off the down line to the left. Uh -huh. The piece to the right, maybe a complete rectangle. Okay, so there's the difference between what Carter is doing, which I like, and, and what it seems like some of you want to really hold on to. Because Carter's saying, here's why it is 96. And why it couldn't be 48. Because it's pretty plain to see if we take this part, okay, which is straight up and down, it's vertical, so that's how I cut it like that, and we move that guy right here. That's not half. It will move, it will, it will fill in that area perfectly. It's right. a parallelogram, all the angles are the same, but like it fills in that gap yeah, perfectly. But it's not what? <coughs> yeah, but it's, on but it's not 90 degrees. Why is it not 90 degrees? But when you still have that there, it's not 90 degrees. But that's not there anymore. It's yeah, disappeared. It's it's right, so I just scribbled it out like we're moving it over here. Why would you do that? They're right. To make it a rectangle. Well, like, so that's like all cut off and it's 8 centimeters there and 8 centimeters there and 12 across the top. So it would be 8 times 12 is equal to 96. Yeah. 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 And then divide by 2? No. No, don't divide by 2. So it's 96 centimeters squared. So it's 96 centimeters squared. I said it's here. the first time. Okay. Over here. I'm a person who hopes I memorized the, the formula correctly. Over here, I'm a person who's looking at the shape. And if I feel a little bit shaky about whether or not I remember it correctly, I examine the shape to make sure that what I've done is correct or to show myself that what I've done is not correct. Over here, I do it, I find the answer, and I hope I'm right. I'm not quite sure if I remember it correctly. Okay? Now, if I'm over here, I may get 96, and that's correct. But I may get 48, and I would never know because I just hope that I remembered it correctly. Over here, I'm a person who's examining the shape and saying, I'm not sure, should I divide it by two or shouldn't I? Well, let's look at the shape. It's almost a rectangle. I can just bring this guy over here. It is a rectangle. I have made a rectangle just by rearranging the pieces of the parallelogram. So this parallelogram can fit inside this rectangle right here. Right? Rectangle really well. And that rectangle is 12 by 8. 
And the parallelogram, all the pieces fit perfectly inside that rectangle. They have the same area. So whatever the area of this rectangle is, is the same as the area of the parallelogram. Okay. If your mind's a little more abstract, it is a slanty rectangle. Okay. It's just a funny looking rectangle. Take a look at this yeah, little sketch I made like just for you. Just for you. Oh, Here's a rectangle. Oh, we did so much work into that. <laughs> now, if I slant you this rectangle, we get a parallelogram. Yep. Okay. Now, you kind of see. Look, I could, I could take this triangle, move it over there. It's right in there. Makes the rect the same rectangle with this height and this base. This parallelogram and this rectangle have the same area. Do it all sorts of different parallelograms. How far can you stretch it? You can stretch it as much as you want. But it would still be the same. Scary. It does have the same area. Okay. Now this is a little bit trickier because it's so skinny. If I cut this off, right? If I cut it off right here and move that piece over there, well, then some more is still going to be hanging out. <laughs> okay, but I could take that piece, and then it would just be kind of a stripey rectangle, right? <laughs> yeah. But I can at least, my brain can at least wrap itself around the, it can be convinced pretty easily that that parallelogram is stretched out as it is, since it has the same base, and the same height, and has the same area. Okay. Not because I remember the formula correctly, luckily, okay? Or because of some memory trick, but because I can just take a minute, look at the shapes, and say that shape can be easily just kind of rearranged and made into a rectangle, so they must have the same area. Or if I make a rectangle, but I had to use two of those shapes, well, the area is supposed to be half of that. Or if I had to use three of those shapes, the area must be a third of that. Right? So back to this parallelogram. It must be 96 centimeters square. Let's investigate a new shape. Okay. We have one minute left? We have like 20 minutes. No, 20. I was looking at We have like 17 minutes left. All right. Are we going to work together? Are we going to accomplish our goal here? Or are we going to talk over each other and make lots of rustling sounds and all that kind of stuff? It depends. Let's go get my stuff. It's up to you. Wait, what are we doing? You're still responsible for learning it, but uh, if you would like my help and you'd like to help each other out, maybe you want to conduct a class in a way that is conducive to that. Okay. Like shaking hands and saying hello and learning each other's names. What? people in this room and the things that they're doing and seeing if they're supporting you or if they're just distracting you and not being helpful. Right? Discussion is great. Talking as a class can be good. But sometimes just talking for the sake of talking isn't all that helpful. Alright. So let's look at a new shape. The trap is The trap. Okay, I'll tell you that along the bottom here, let's call it 18, let's call this one 12, let's call the height 7. I want you to tell me the area of that trapezoid. Work it out in your papers, okay? I don't need a formula, I want to know what the area is, okay? We're going to develop a formula, of course. I'm not just going to tell you what it is and you memorize it. We're going to convince ourselves that that must be the formula. Okay. Take a second. Okay, so what do we have for... What do you have? 63 what? 63 units. So far, what can we... 63 squares. Squares, yeah, that's all we can say. That is not what I thought. 63 squares. I got 756. Was that 123 squares? Was that 
simple shape and a pretty simple formula. A lot of variability here. Okay? If I make it a practice to instead of saying, well, I remember the formula correctly, and instead just really quickly I sp split, sp you know, copy this, spin it around, move this guy over, I, yeah, it's one half of base 10 pi. That makes total sense because of this arrangement that I can make uh, with the triangle. Okay? So rather than being convinced still that all you need to know is the formula for this and that you'll just remember it for the rest of your life. Okay? It is not very convincing. You haven't convinced me. I am not convinced that most of the people in this class will remember the formula if I tell it to you right now. Yeah, I will. Okay? So let's convince ourselves of what the formula would have to be. Okay? Hold on. So to start with, let's, I guess we should copy this over. All right, there's a the parallelogram. <laughs> By copying it, flipping it, moving around, chopping it up like we did with the triangle or whatever, let's find a way, given, say, this measurement here, this measurement here, I'll just call that height. Can you actually like cut that and put it? Do anything you want. I mean, well, no, no, like, can no, you do no, that on the floor? Oh, no, I can't really like cut. I got not in a really smooth way. I can just scribble it out and draw it. Oh, okay. okay, card. So, you want to? Okay, but if I cut that triangle off, will it fit over there? No. No. Not guaranteed. And maybe that's maybe that's, that's something I. That one's more plain. Kind of a failing of mine to draw this in a. Try to make it clear that these for trapezoid don't necessarily have to be like the same angles or anything. So. Will this triangle be able to come over here, flip around, and fit in there? No. no. Not here. And not guaranteed for a trapezoid. You got something? You can't. Or, or just tell me I'm good.
So you divided by two and got uh, sixty-three. Okay. So Jackson just took it and made a rectangle around it and said, uh, "Let's do base times height, and then we'll cut it in half." What do you think about that? You got the answer sixty-three. Good job. What do you think about that? Um, okay. Here's a rectangle. Okay. That's just as wide and just as tall as this trapezoid. Is the trapezoid half of it? No. It's half of this part of it, and it's half of this part of it, but it's all of this part of it, right? Yeah. It makes up 100% of this middle part of the rectangle. Yeah. So it doesn't do the same as like, a, like we do with the triangles, where it like cuts all parts of the rectangle completely in half. It only cuts part of it in half, so it's not quite half of that rectangle. Oh, yeah. Can I go back? Oh, you just hold up your agenda in the air, and I'll know. Okay, so with this stuff stuff, uh, uh, what I learned from, well, from Bob going to school in Hellgate is, because I came in three years ago. Why is everybody else talking? Tiana's talking. And they were doing completely other stuff than what I was learning at uh, CS Porter. Okay. So, and I was there. You learn base plus base times height, but then we'll also say quarter, they call it base times base plus height. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, that's, that's weird. And so that was thinking we should go, uh, you know, y times x plus h equals number. That could get a number. Mm -hmm. Okay. It, it might not be the right number, but we don't know. And it's bad to hope. Okay, that's a lot. I wouldn't say that's generally a good rule if it's bad to hope, but I would say it's, it's a bad way to do math. Yeah. And just hope that it's right. Did you just laugh? Did I laugh? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've never seen you laugh. Yes. Oh. Okay. Uh, I'm going to give you a hint, and I'm going to give you some homework to do with that hint. Uh, I don't want to give more homework. Uh, no, I'll do it on a fresh piece. You're going to turn it in. You might want to listen so that you both hear the homework and get out of here on time. Listening. listening? Yes. Okay. The hint is take the trapezoid. Make a copy of it. There's other ways to do it, but this is one way to do it. Flip it around. Oh, it makes the heads of the gone. Oh, it makes the head of the gone. Put it like that. Oh, yeah, fine. Yeah, what's our homework? Divided by two. Yeah, what's that? Oh, we got Robert over here saying divide by two. It sounds like it makes sense since I just made two pair of two trapezoids. Uh, oh, yeah, two trapezoids. So when we come back and you're turning your homework, I want your homework to somehow explain a formula for the area of a trapezoid. Explain a formula for the area of a trapezoid. All right. That's the beginning of your hint. Doesn't matter. Let's call this base one, base two, and the height. Look at our formula here. Base one, base two, base three, base four, base five, base six, base seven, base eight, base nine, base ten, base eleven, base twelve, base thirteen, base fourteen, base fifteen, base sixteen, base seventeen, base eighteen, 